The family of my husband of 49 years, Michael Daniel Foley, provided remarkable patriotic service to our beloved American community for generations. His ancestors from his mother's side, the Cliffords, Isaac and Samuel Clifford, fought in the Revolutionary War, including the pivotal 1777 Battle of Saratoga. Their descendant, Earl Clifford, fought during World War I, and his daughter, Betty Jean Clifford Foley, was the mother of my husband, Michael Daniel Foley. The father of Vietnam veteran Michael Daniel Foley was World War II veteran Daniel Foley Jr. from the prominent and highly respected Foley family of Vallejo, California. Vallejo was founded as California State Capital in 1850 and named for General Mariano Guadalupe Vallejo, who obtained several large Mexican land grants, including the Rancho Susco, where the cities of Vallejo and Venetia were built. My husband, Vietnam veteran Michael Daniel Foley, was a fourth-generation native of Vallejo, California. His great-grandfather, John Foley, came from Ireland in 1870. By 1873, John Foley built enough of a nest egg, acquired a place of his own, and in 1883, a wife. Two years after, in 1885, Mike's grandfather, Daniel Foley Sr. was born, the first of six children. John Foley was on his way to a large family and prosperous future as a rancher and dairy farmer. By the time of his death, at age 58 in 1908, he had become one of the largest ranchers in Solano County. The 1926 History of Solano County, California by Marguerite Hunt included the following summary of John Foley's life. John Foley, who in his generation was one of the substantial ranchmen and landowners in Solano County and widely known throughout the region, came to California in 1870. He was married at Vallejo to Joanna Dennehy and established his home on a farm in the immediate vicinity where he developed a good piece of property and where he spent the remainder of his life, his death occurring there in 1908. His widow survived him for 12 or 13 years, her death occurring in 1921. His son, Daniel Foley Sr., grandfather of my husband, Michael Daniel Foley, made great contributions to the development of Vallejo. The Vallejo Times Herald of Friday, July 23, 1999, published a full-page article on the life of Daniel Foley Sr., Mike's grandfather, as, quote, one who made a difference, unquote in its series Anticipating the Millennium. Celebrate 2000. Your 21st century starts here, says the banner. The headline noted that, quote, dairyman, banker, civic official, Dan Foley spent most of his life working to improve the lives of area residents, unquote. The convergence of cir circumstances which led Dan Foley to prominence in Vallejo began even before his birth on a Solano County farm in 1885. The man for whom Dan Foley Park, one of the largest park in Vallejo, would be named was the son of John and Joanna Dennehy Foley, originally of Ireland who immigrated to the U.S. in 1870 and became one of our area's largest landowners and racers of stock. 
John Foley first operated the Borges Ranch in American Canyon in 1890, later leasing the neighboring Luxinger Ranch as well. Three years later, the Foley's moved to the then Hussey Ranch, one half mile west of Blue Rock Springs on Columbia Parkway. The family also operated the ranch in Sky Valley. Part of the huge Foley Ranch was donated to the city to become in time Dan Foley Park, a signature area in Vallejo, California. Dan Foley was educated in the Vallejo Public Schools, attending Hunter's Hill School, then situated near Blue Rock Springs. He later attended what then was Vallejo Business College. Foley left the area briefly working as a carpenter in San Francisco. He returned to Vallejo in 1908 to manage his family's holdings when his father passed away. The Foley's operated an extensive dairy farm, first as Foley Brothers and as the Golden State Milk Company, whose plant was still located on Main Street as late as 1987. The name Golden State Butter was widely known for many years throughout Central California. With his brothers, in 1922, Foley founded and operated as president and general manager made of California Milk Company, which was being run by foremost in 1968. For years, it was in the 900 block of Marin Street and later at 313 Virginia Street. The 1926 history book on Solano County included a chapter on the life of Daniel Foley Sr. as, quote, one of the foremost figures in the great dairy industry in the state. For years, one of the leaders in that line in Solano County, unquote. His life embodied the history of Vallejo, California, particularly the building of infrastructures in banking, agriculture, utilities, especially water. Foley married Florence Rood in Stockton in 1921, with whom he had a son, Daniel Foley Jr. The only son of Daniel Foley Sr. was my father-in-law, Daniel Foley Jr., who wrote his World War II diary that my husband, Michael Daniel Foley, read in this TV show. In 1951, the Vallejo Times Herald reported on my father-in-law, Mike's father, Daniel Foley Jr., as the youngest dairy executive at the Maid of California, serving as secretary and assistant plant manager since 1946. A graduate of Vallejo High School, in 1941, he attended the University of California, Davis, for two years as a dairy industry major. He served as a navigator with the 8th Air Force in Europe and the Air Transport Command in the Pacific Theater for four years during World War II and was discharged as a captain. As a B-17 bomber navigator in Europe, he completed 25 missions before his plane was shot down, and he was interned in Switzerland from where he escaped with the aid of the French underground. Among his military decorations was the Air Medal. World War II veteran Daniel Foley Jr. was a past director of the Vallejo Jr. Chamber of Commerce, was a member of the Rotary and Elks Club, and chapter number one of the Navy League. His wife was the former Betty Jean Clifford of Vallejo, and they have two children. My husband, Vietnam veteran Michael Daniel Foley, and his sister, Susan Jean Foley Wheeler. The Foleys lived 
at 421 El Camino Real in Vallejo, California. Michael Daniel Foley, my husband, idolized his father, Daniel Foley Jr. They shared the love of history and travel. It is with great love and pride that my husband, Vietnam veteran Michael Daniel Foley, shared his dad's World War II diary in this TV show for December 2022 for Fairfax County Stories by Lady Fairfax, 2009, Filipino-American, Corazon Sandoval Foley. Thank you very much for sharing your time with Mike and me. Switzerland at Adelboden, which is in the central part of the country. Uh, it was pretty decent. Well, there wasn't like a prison, but they they escaped, uh, were later caught uh, just before they, they got uh, away in France, were beaten up and sent to Diablo Ray, which is a, a, a small valley surrounded by mountains. It's only one way in or out. And there he was put in a camp that was a, a much harder and notorious for, for, for being nasty to uh, pilots who continued to try to escape. Uh, the 15 minute walk was January 8, 1945 for a squad of 10 infantrymen. The country was rolling and rather heavily wooded with snow partially covering the ground. We couldn't see the stars, nor did we have any maps. Therefore, we followed our noses and kept the Geneva Coil behind us. We cautiously crawled behind a low fence and hid in the shadows while some farmer carried on a conversation with his friend less than 100 feet away. And once again, all was quiet. We edged our way through the woods until we heard the magical sound of running water. But what else but the Red Squaw River in France? A few minutes later, we reached the stream in the midst of the forest. First, we very carefully waited to check for the presence of any border guards. I suppose it was maybe half an hour before we satisfied that all was clear. And then we linked arms to form a human, human chain across the icy torrent. It was unbelievable. After our previous experiences along the river, France at last, and easy too. For about a half an hour, for about an hour we followed a forest, always with Geneva's coil at our back, until at last we reached discovery by coming out on the open road. We were far enough into France by now, we thought. It must be after midnight by now. Besides, the protective forest was finally gone. At 0100 hours on the 8th of January, we followed the road under the light of a winder, and suddenly out of the shadows came a guttural octon. What's this? How could we still be in Switzerland? I couldn't believe it. Then it dawned on me the Versoir is the, is the Franco Swiss border to the north, but just about on this, on this latitude, it makes a right angle turn toward Lake Geneva. and for that short distance, maybe five or six miles, both banks are Swiss. My Irish blood kicked me in. The guard crossed the road, still with his gun leveled, and called for the Swiss equivalent of a corporal of the guard. The winery was the guard house, but nobody inside stirred, so the guard stuck his head out, his head inside the door to yell again. Still no answer. As the guard once again peered inside the door, we were gone. We were running full blast into the, into the darkness beyond the light when the armed guard screamed at us to halt. <clears throat> I don't know yet what made us keep going, but we weren't about to stop. We were in the shadows now, and a bullet flashed off a rock ahead. Then Gallagher slipped and fell, but he was running again almost instantly. Another flash, and then Vic stumbled too as he turned off the road to the right. But then he too regained his balance. About this time, I also fell into the, he the hedge on the right. The snow had, had felled all three of us, but Gallagher and Vic had, had kept right on running. There I was, hiding in the hedge, feeling a little like a grounded pheasant back home. By this time, there were shouts and curses from the guardhouse about two to three hundred yards away. I swear it seemed like it could have been at least a thousand yards away. For about 20 minutes, the noise and confusion had pretty well subsided. And I figured that maybe I'd better move on. I was very, very disillusioned, and I didn't know precisely where the border was. All I really knew for 
certain was that I never would take anything for sure again. I didn't know how much walking was ahead of me, but I had a feeling of supercaution. 